Grade 12 Physics, Fields Note Number 4, Electric Field Intensity. In this note, we're going to actually look at the electric field intensity. This is something similar to a gravitational field intensity, or as it's more commonly known as, gravitational acceleration. Here we're going to compare the intensity of gravitational and electric fields. So for gravity, if we look at acceleration due to gravity, it just comes from Fg equals mg. So gravitational field uh, intensity on Earth is g, is really, it's how strong a gravitational field is, is at a point. This tells us how quickly an object will accelerate at that point. In this formula, it compares force per unit mass. So gravity, if it goes up and grabs something in an object, it puts a force on every unit of mass in that object. If we compare it to an electric field, we get the value uh, eta, which is that curly E. That's the force per charge. So it's almost the same as a gravitational field, but now this is how strong an electric field is at, um, on an object at a point. In this case, the force will grab every unit of charge in an object. The unit analysis is pretty clean. Left side is Newton's per coulomb, so is right side. So again, just to summarize, gravity is a force on every unit of mass. In this case, for electric field intensity, it's a force on every unit of charge of an object. So only if an object is charged, it will feel electric intensity um, due to some sort of a charged object. Now, similar to voltage, we don't need to have two objects in a field to figure out what force is being um, um, felt or, or how much gravitational potential energy. We can choose an arbitrary point, some point X, um, to check the intensity of an electric field. So using this new equation, where eta is F over Q, we know force in an electric field is Coulomb's law. So when we put that in and simplify it, we get eta equals kq over r squared. So this is how we can find an electric field intensity at some arbitrary point in an electric field. But again, we have to remember it's just used for a point, not for when two objects feel an attraction or repulsion. Now let's do an example. So this is the example from the notes. We're going to calculate a magnitude and direction of an electric field intensity at some point z due to two charges, which we'll call charge X and charge Y. So again, this is something that where we can imagine if we were to place a particle at point Z, what types of forces would it feel due to X and due to Y? So X here is going to be some charged object, 50 microcoulombs, and Y is going to be some charged object, negative 10 microcoulombs. So what's Z going to feel because of those two charges? The distances between them, X and Y have a distance of 0.45 meters, and Y and Z is 0.3 meters. We can actually compare it, if you want to think of it, to gravity. Say X and Y here are two planets, and you're just floating out in space at point Z. What would you feel due to those planets? Well, you would feel a gravitational attraction to X, and a gravitational attraction to y. And we can use those two and as vectors as we draw them here at point z. The total gravitational attraction would be the sum of those two vectors. But an electric field is a little bit different than this. Here above z, we're going to feel an attraction to y because y is a negative charge. Right? Negative, it means attractive. But because X is positive, we're actually going to feel repulsion. It's going to be like a repulsive gravity from X. So it's going to point us in the other direction. So to find out the magnitudes of those two intensities, we can use our new equation for a point in the field. So eta equals kq over r squared. We put in that full separation between z and x to find the intensity from, from x. And we find that it's 8 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb to the right. Now let's look at from y. 
we put in the values that we need. We have negative 10 times 10 to the negative 6. We get an answer of 10 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb to the left. So overall, all we have to do now is add the vectors. 10 times 10 to the 5 minus 8 times 10 to the 5. It's a minus because we're just going to call everything to the left positive. We get a value of 2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb to the left. So that would be that little green arrow that we just drew on Z. Finally, electric field intensity has a neat little property where if we build some sort of a, a potential difference across two plates, we can actually make an electric field intensity between those plates, sort of like a sandwich here. So let's see, they say that these are metal plates. We can apply a potential difference across them, so some sort of a voltage. We're actually going to generate or create an electric field between them. So the neat feature about this is that the electric field that's between the plates is going to be constant. So it doesn't matter where you are, if you're close to one of the plates or if you're exactly in the middle, if you're at one end versus the other end, no matter what place you are in the middle of those plates, you will feel a constant field. There will be no difference between any of those points. So actually to calculate that intensity, eta here is going to be equal to the voltage on those plates divided by their separation, which we're going to call D. So eta again is electric field intensity in newtons per coulomb. V is the voltage that would be placed on those plates in volts. And D would be the separation distance, so the distance between those plates. And that would be in meters. So checking the units here, left side would be newtons per coulomb. Right side would be volts per meter. Remember, a volt is a joule per coulomb. If we rearrange that, we get joules per coulomb meter. But here, work we have to remember is FD. So that means a joule is equal to newton meter. So a newton is a joule per meter. So rearranging it, left side equals right side.